Welcome to God's house. Another church year has passed. You may not know that, but this uh, week we mark the passing of one more Anno Domini, one more year of our Lord. And it's been 2,000 and 22, roughly, of those, maybe subtract 33 from that, since our Lord left, right, and said, I'm coming soon. And so sometimes we say, okay, when? We say, how long? Because life can be great, and yet, even when life is great, it can be deceptive, and it can be difficult. So how do we endure? How do we hold on to the faith, to the robe of righteousness that Christ gives us until he comes again when it's been so long? Well, today our Lord tells us we do it by holding to his scriptures. We do it by focusing on his word because there he will provide us with the conviction, with the rebuke, and with the comfort we need until the day is just right and he comes and makes all things right again. So that's what our focus is today, how our Lord points us to the scriptures as we await his return. And our worship today begins with our first hymn. It's hymn 487 in the blue hymnal under your seat. It's also on page 4 of your service folder. Lo, he comes with clouds descending. God bless your worship.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And let us pray. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The prophet Habakkuk was not so unlike us as we watched the news. The prophet Habakkuk looked out and he saw a society that was filled with violence, a society that was filled with injustice, and a society that was full of miserable people, and he longed for God to do something. And God says he will. In fact, the first thing he says is quite horrifying. He pronounced the judgment on the people of Israel through the Babylonians. But he also pronounced a day of justice. And in the meantime, he pointed his prophet, as he points us, to his word, to the scriptures. We read. The threatening oracle which the prophet Habakkuk saw. How long, Lord, must I cry for help, but you do not listen? I call out to you, violence, but you do not save. Why do you cause me to see injustice? Why do you overlook misery? Devastation and violence confront me. There is strife and tensions rise. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the city wall. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer he will give to my complaint. Then the Lord answered me. He said, record the vision and write it plainly on tablets so that a herald may run with it. Indeed, the vision is waiting for the appointed time. It longs for fulfillment and will not prove false. If it seems slow in coming, wait for it, because it will certainly come and will not be delayed. Look, his soul is puffed up and is not righteous within him, but the righteous one will live by his faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm of the day is Psalm 130. Please join with me in reading it. Out of the depths, I have called to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the sound of my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of guilt, O Lord, who could stand? But with you, there is pardon. So you are feared. I wait for the Lord. 
my soul waits, and in his word I have put my hope. Israel, wait confidently for the Lord, because with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is abundant redemption. The word of the Lord. The second lesson from God's word today is from John's vision, which the Lord provided to him and which is written down in the book that we know as Revelation. And here, uh, the Lord tells John not to seal away the vision. Instead, he says, I will come, I will come soon, and the words of the vision will be fulfilled. And he points people to the Scriptures as they wait for him, and he says that those who hold on to the Scriptures as they wait will, will be eternally blessed. We read from Revelation 22, beginning at verse 6. The angel said to me, these words are faithful and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. And look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who holds on to the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. When I heard and saw them, I bowed down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed me these things. But he said to me, do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and also with those who hold on to the words of this book. Worship God. The angel also said to me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, because the time is near. Let the one who is unjust continue to be unjust. Let the one who is filthy continue to be filthy. Let the one who is just continue to do what is just. Let the one who is holy continue to be holy. Look, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me, to repay each one according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Therefore, says the Lord, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Alleluia. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel that is appointed for this, the last Sunday of the church year, is from Luke chapter 12. It also serves as the basis for the sermon today. We read, Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning. Be like people waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. Blessed are those servants whom the master will find watching when he comes. Amen, I tell you, he will dress himself and have them recline at the table, and he will come and serve them. Even if he comes in the second or third watch, they will be blessed if he finds them alert. But know this, if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you are not expecting Him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated as we join to sing the hymn of the day, Still My Soul, Be Still, hymn 834. Not fear, the winds of change may rage tomorrow. God is at your side, no longer dread the fires of unexpected sorrow. God, you are my God, and 
I will trust in you and not be shaken. Lord of peace, renew a steadfast spirit within me to rest in you alone. Brothers and sisters, in our Lord Jesus, what would it have been like to have been a disciple of the Lord? I've thought about that many times, and mostly as I think about that, it's kind of a wistful sort of thought, you know, like how, how awesome it would have been, how, how comforting it would have been, how nice to finally never have to struggle again because I would know once and for all that he, he was who he said he was, that he is who he says he is. Yet as I prepared for the sermon today, you know what I realized? I realized that to be a follower of Christ would have been perhaps more than anything shocking. Shocking. Almost nothing Jesus did was what people expected him to do. Almost nothing he said was what people expected him to say. And it wasn't just because, you know, those Jews were were so stuck in their ways, they were so misguided, or they were so foolish. No. No. It was because my thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord. Because my ways are not your ways. Because as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. See, people rejected Jesus and the disciples abandoned him in his moment of greatest need and they regularly misunderstood him because 
just like we do. They overvalued their own culturally informed thoughts. And they devalued the thoughts of God. And so as we delve into what Jesus has to tell us in the word that is before us today, I would urge you to humble yourself. Resist the temptation to immediately dismiss whatever does not strike you as reasonable. Whatever doesn't quite fit into the way that you see the world. Fight that inner defense lawyer that we all have within us that would always seek to rationalize and justify your thoughts, your life, and your behavior. Because while the truth that falls from the lips of Jesus is often shocking, it is always exactly what we need to hear, indescribably good, and the only thing that will set us free. Which is a good segue into the first truth that Jesus shares with us in the word that is before us today. The idea of being set free. It's interesting that as I studied to prepare for this sermon, one of the commentaries that I read pointed out that as Jesus in the gospel talks about how we are to be ever ready and alert and vigilant for the return of the Lord, he uses the exact same language that God uses when he is giving the Israelites instructions for how they are to eat the Passover on the night of the exodus from Egypt. The Greek words that are translated as be dressed, ready for service, that Jesus says in the gospel lesson, they could also be translated as tuck your cloak into your belt. It was an idiom for girding up your long robes in your home to get ready for action. And it was the exact same thing that God told the Israelites to do in Exodus chapter 12 when he said, this is how you are to eat it, the Passover, with your cloak tucked into your belt your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. And so the reason that that is so interesting is because that picture fits perfectly with what Jesus is telling us today. As we continue to wait for our Lord to return, Christians are to live as though we were slaves in Egypt, but just about to bust out. In other words, we are not supposed to be too comfortable here because this is not our home. This is why Jesus says later in the text to be alert. We we need to be clear-eyed about the fact that we live behind enemy lines. So the cultural values of our culture are not to be our own. And I'm not just talking about the obviously anti-Christian ones. Remember, Jesus' teaching didn't come as a shock just to prostitutes and tax collectors. Oh, we weren't supposed to do that? Jesus' teaching was a shock, probably even more so to the people who considered themselves to be highly religious. So to be alert means to realize that the devil always, always, always comes in sheep's clothing. Perhaps you could think of it like this. We are only days away from Thanksgiving, right? And that is a national holiday. Yet the unofficial holiday that comes just one day after Thanksgiving may well take up more time, more thought, more preparation than the holiday that precedes it. I'm talking, of course, about Black Friday. And why does Black Friday consume the amount of time and thought and energy and stress that it does? Well, because Christmas is coming. Not the celebration of the birth of the Savior, because that specific part doesn't really require that much preparation, does it? But the giving of gifts is a different story. That 
requires thought. That requires time. That requires effort. Unlike the word of Christ, that requires us to wake up early and to stay up late. But to get back on the point, why in the world am I launching into some tirade about Black Friday? It's because the devil always comes in sheep's clothing. And the immediate context of Jesus' admonition to be alert for his return in Luke chapter 12 was a long expose by Jesus about our relationship with money. Or to use an older, broader, but probably more uh, succinct term, mammon. And if there's one thing the devil can use us as he comes to us in sheep's clothing that he can use to lull us to sleep is, well, it's, it's mammon especially over the next month or two. Money and what it purports to do to us can distract us and can lull us into a spiritual sleep. And, and here's, of course, where we need the humility that I was talking about earlier, right? Because as, as soon as we hear this sort of indictment, the defense lawyer in us will always start to stand up and yell objection for all sorts of seemingly valid reasons. We'll say, well, come on, I'm not that materialistic. I'm not. Look, I don't care that much about stuff. Or the inner defense lawyer will say, Here, here's the pastor in the church again, a brand new church that needs money to pay for the new church, talking about money again. And so on and so on. Right? The defense lawyer always crops up, but, but we have to resist. We need to tell our inner defense lawyer to sit down, We need to tell him to be quiet, and we must remember that the entire life and teaching of the gospel of Christ are shocking reversals of what people expected and what we still might expect. After all, if your reaction to everything that you hear preached from this pulpit is always just, okay, sure, yeah, I get it, that either means that I'm doing a horrible job of preaching or you're not listening very well. Because when we really listen to Jesus, we will always be convicted. We will always be challenged. Our eyes will be opened and will be changed. So understand that whether we realize it or not, we eat up more of our culture than we realize. And we get vastly more comfortable with the ways of this world than we should. And when we don't remember that we are just about to leave this world behind, when we instead think that the peace and the prosperity and the happiness that we seek can be found here in Egypt, in the things of Egypt, in the pleasures of Egypt, that's when we begin to be lulled into a deadly sleep. So we need to fight to stay awake. We need to realize that while we can enjoy the blessings that our Lord has granted us here, we are in Egypt. We are not home. And the Lord is coming back soon to bust us out, and we want to be ready. Because for those who are ready for him, the shock of his sudden arrival will only be rivaled by the shock of his goodness. Did you catch what he said about that when I read the text the first time, when I read the gospel lesson? How good he is. If that's not striking a bell, let me, let me read it again. Jesus says, Blessed are those servants whom the master will find watching when he comes. Amen, I tell you, he will dress himself and have them recline at the table 
and He will come and serve them. Brothers and sisters, that is the shocking reality that keeps us going. Jesus gets it. He knows how exhausting it is to always be on the alert, how exhausting it is to constantly be searching out our lives for sin and denying ourselves and crucifying the sinful natures in us as we strive to follow Him. He knows how hard it can be to be a Jew living in Egypt. And that's why He promises you that in a little while, everything will change. He will return. And when He does, He will not demand that you bow and figure it out to serve Him better. Instead, He will do as He did when He was among us. Jesus said, I am among you as one who serves. On that day that our Lord comes back, though He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the creator of all things, He will look at you and say, take it easy. Relax. Recline at the wedding feast of the Lamb. He will act like you were the master, and He will serve you, and our joy will know no end. And here's a really good thing to keep in mind, too. Because He knows that we would never make it until then on our own, He does that even now. Whenever you come here. See, a lot of people get worship totally backwards. They think of worship as something that we come to do for God. But worship with our God is actually the opposite. Come to me, you who are weary and burdened, he says, and I will give you rest. So that's how we worship, by dragging our tired, worn out, beat up and exhausted selves here so that He can serve us. We come to confess our failures, to acknowledge our guilt, and in His Word He comes to us to forgive us and breathe new life into us. We come weeping over the brokenness in our lives and our alienation, our alienation from Him, our separation from each other, and in His own flesh and blood, He comes and gives us Himself and unites us to Himself and to one another. We come saying, I have sinned, I have failed, I feel like death, and I should die, and He comes and says, my righteousness is yours. My death was yours. My unending blessed life, it's yours. You are my body, each and every one of you. And I love you. You are mine. It's kind of shocking. Like everything else God reveals to us. But it's also true. It's true shocking, and shockingly good. Amen. Please stand. Let's join together now to confess our faith by using the words of the Nicene Creed. It's on page 10 
of the service folder. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. And if you haven't done so yet, please take a moment to sign one of the care cards that are in the back of the pew in front of you. And on your way out of the church today, you can drop those in the offering plate. Um, After you've had a moment to do that, we'll join together in praying the prayer of the church. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son, through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Plant your word in our hearts and cause it to produce fruit in our lives. Strengthen and defend your church, that by your word and sacraments, faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Support all who spread the light of your truth throughout the world. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Raise up Christians to serve you in the ministry of the word and in all godly walks of life. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Give them wisdom that they may promote justice and hinder evil. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Be with all who devote themselves to any useful task. Comfort all who are in sorrow and need sickness, or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. Grant them your love and take them into your tender care. And now hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you, who now rest from their labors. Console those who are mourning or living with sadness. Keep us in the true faith and bring us at last to the joys of heaven. Grant these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again. Our service continues now as our Lord Jesus comes to us, as I said in the sermon, in his own body and blood, 
to unite us to himself, to forgive us of our sins, and to unite us to each other. We pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Your word brought all things into being, and your word will call all things to an end. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that in mercy you sent your Son to redeem us. By his incarnation, he became one with us. By his perfect life, he fulfilled your holy will. By his innocent death, he overcame hell. By his rising from the grave, he opened heaven. We remember, O Lord, with thanksgiving, the saving work of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Renew us that we may joyfully serve you in your kingdom of grace, now and in your kingdom of glory forever. Amen. Amen. And taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are also bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I would now invite those who are on this half of the church to please uh, come forward uh, on this side and receive uh, the bread and the wine, the body and blood of our Lord. After they have returned to their seats, we'll continue with the next half.
Please stand. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you've given us to eat and drink in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we join together to sing our final hymn.
Well, in the name of Jesus, good afternoon. Good to have you here. Um, just one th or two things to highlight before you go today, and that is that we do have a Thanksgiving worship service if you are not traveling uh, during the Thanksgiving holiday, um, and that's at 9 a.m. this coming Thursday morning. And uh, also, just if you haven't signed up but you intended to si sign up for the live nativity, please do so ASAP. You can do it online if you want to type in all those numbers, or you can just use the sheets in the back of the church. That's all I have for you. Have an awesome rest of your week in the Lord. You can excuse yourselves whenever you're ready.